Welcome to Micro Terrors. Scary stories for kids. Where it's always the spooky season. Full of chills. Thrills. And spine tingling spooks. Micro Terrors are family friendly frights for those ages 8 and up. And while our stories are for younger ears, we are still talking about things that go bump in the night. And some children may not be able to handle what others can. Parental consent is recommended. Now, for tonight's Micro Terror. Shortcut Through a Small Town by Sherry White Nathan sat in the back seat of his family's Volkswagen Rabbit, playing with his electronic football game. Nathan, turn that off for now, his mother said from the front passenger seat. I'm trying to navigate and those constant beeps are distracting me. She held the map on her lap, extending it as far as she could without getting in her husband's way. I don't have anything else to do back here, Nathan whined. Read your comic books, his mother suggested. I read them all, and can't we put the top up? It feels like bugs are smacking me in the face. Nathan, enough, his dad said. I want to get to the beach house rental before it gets dark. Nathan threw his back against the seat, defeated. Sorry, Dad. Nathan's mom shook the map out, then traced a line with her finger. Okay, Michael, she said to her husband. There's a small town called Jefferson a few miles ahead we can cut through. It'll save us at least half an hour. Do you want to try it? You bet. Show me the way, Janet. Take this exit, Michael. Then the town is about two miles away, Janet said. As they left the interstate, Nathan noticed black clouds gathering above them. Dad, it looks like it's going to rain. Can we put the top up now? We'll get through the town, then stop for gas and a snack. I'll put the top up then. A little rain won't hurt us, Nathan insisted. Janet, why don't you put the map in the glove compartment? I'd rather it didn't get wet and soggy. You don't care if I get wet and soggy, Nathan mumbled. Nathan, knock it off or you spend our first day at the beach in your room. Nathan crossed his arms and stuck out his tongue, knowing his dad couldn't see him. Janet tried folding the map perfectly so it would be nice and flat, but finally gave up. Oh, forget this! She folded it just enough to fit in the glove compartment. Michael and Nathan laughed. That's when the radio began to crackle, and a male voice spoke urgently. Hey, turn that up! Sounds like something's going on! Michael's voice suddenly became serious and concerned. Janet leaned up slightly and raised the volume. Storm come! Rental rain tug shelt immediately! What did he say? Michael asked. Uh, torrential rain, I think, said Janet. But why take cover for rain? That makes no sense. All right, the town is right ahead, said Michael. We'll pull over where it's safe to stop and put the top up. Oh, this town is so cute. Janet looked around. Charmed at the vintage houses painted in various pastel colors lining the road, most of which were surrounded by white picket fences. She noticed the street signs on the corner behind them. Of course, we're on Main Street! Michael got out to put the top up. Rumbles of thunder began to fill the air. A siren shrieked through the town, startling the three of them. Jeez, that about gave me a heart attack, Janet said from the car, her hand over her chest. Dad, is it a tornado? Nathan asked in a trembling voice. He was afraid of tornadoes, even though they lived in an area where they were uncommon. Janet often lamented that she let him watch The Wizard of Oz when he was little. I mean, what about the Wicked Witch, she'd say. Why be afraid of the wind for crying out loud? Don't worry, Nathan, we'll be okay, his dad said. Janet, this is stuck. Can you come help me? Nathan wondered how his dad could sound so calm with everything going on. He was still too young to realize that parents usually kept fear to themselves when it came to their children. Janet got out of the car, her legs a little wobbly as she teetered on high heels to the back of the car. Hello, hey, you people out there! 
Michael and Janet looked around and saw an older woman standing behind her screen door across the street from them. Come to my house. You don't have enough time to fix that. Dad, I'm really scared. Please get the top up. His parents struggled with the soft top, his dad in particular beyond frustrated. Other citizens opened their windows and doors just enough to shout for the family to take shelter before it was too late. Little boy, get in my house, hurry! The lady behind the screen door yelled, beckoning him with a come here gesture. Michael, we need to move faster, Janet cried. It's almost free, just a few more seconds. A clap of thunder, as violent as a cannon blast, crashed overhead, shaking the ground. Nathan! Go to that lady's house, Michael instructed his son. Aren't you coming, Dad? Mom? Yes, but you go first, his dad shouted over the winds that had just kicked up. But Dad, now! Nathan unbuckled his lap belt and scrambled out the door. He ran as fast as he could up the concrete stairs to the lady's porch. She opened her screen door just enough for him to get in. She pulled the door closed and held the boy tightly. Flat, wet plopping sounds slowly started hitting the pavement. Michael, we have to go inside, Janet shouted. Michael finally yanked the soft top free and moved it over the open car. Get in, Janet. We'll wait in the car until the storm passes. Janet reached for the door handle and then felt a wet plop on her arm. She looked at her arm in horror. Oh my God, Michael! We have to run! Now! Before he could reply, another clap of thunder made him unsteady on his feet. He leaned against the car to get his footing and looked up. A sickly, bile-colored cloud swirled above. It opened, releasing its unimaginable contents. What is happening? He managed to whisper before hundreds of quarter-sized black spiders fell upon him, the hairs on their legs as sharp as razors. Janet ran up the concrete stairs, screaming Nathan's name. She slipped on a flattened spider in front of the porch and fell onto her back, hitting her head. Mom! shrieked Nathan. He tried to get out of the house, but the woman inside held him with a grip that he couldn't break. Let me go! he pleaded. The woman turned Nathan so his face burrowed into her chest. Don't watch, sweetheart. She pulled him away and closed the heavy wooden front door. Janet tried to get up, but spiders rained upon her, tearing into her with their fangs and razor-haired legs. They filled her mouth when she opened it to scream and skittered down her throat. Soon Janet and Michael were nothing more than spider-covered lumps lying in the street beside their car. One of Janet's arms shakily reached out from the mass she was buried in, as if looking for help, but then just as quickly dropped, never moving again. In the nearby house, the stranger tried to comfort Nathan. Then it began to rain for real, washing the spiders away into the sewer drains. The car radio crackled to life, the announcer talking to an audience of none. Is everyone all right? This year's tarantula rain is over. I hope everyone in town made it inside in time. Godspeed all. Thank you for listening to Micro Terrors. Join us each Saturday for another scary story. For more fun, visit our website at microterrors.com, where we will also have spooky games you can print out and play, like wicked word searches, mysterious mazes, and more. Microterrors.com is also where you can find us on your favorite social media and even send in your own scary story for us to tell. Plus, you'll learn more about our author, Scott Donnelly, who has other horrors for both young and old. I hope you'll join me again soon for Micro Terrors, scary stories for kids. Hey weirdos, be sure to click the like button and subscribe to this channel and click the notification bell so you don't miss future videos. I post videos seven days a week. And while you're at it, spread the darkness by sharing this video with someone you know who loves all things strange and macabre. If you want to listen to the podcast, you can find it at WeirdDarkness.com slash listen.